One of the problems in, that uh, you run into diagnosing um, hydraulic systems uh, that are controlled by electrical systems, people refer to it as electric over hydraulic, uh, one of the biggest problems you have is that when you have to make a quick decision, especially in a field service environment, it's very difficult to determine whether or not the coil, which is the magnetic coil, has failed, which means the electrical system has failed, or whether or not the hydraulic valve, the mechanical valve or the manifold has failed. Uh, there's a very easy way to determine very quickly whether or not it's the electrical system or whether it's the hydraulic system, and that's by using a compass. When the coil magnetizes, it produces a magnetic field, and that magnetic field has a north and south pole here and here. And it could be south and north and north and south, it doesn't really matter. It depends on a lot of different things. But the point is it produces a north and south pole and those poles attract a compass. So if you're out there trying to diagnose a system quickly, all you have to do is energize the coil and hope that the coil is working. And if the compass needle swings, then that points out the fact that the electrical system is, is still working. If you hold the compass, you can actually watch the compass point directly to the uh, retention nut on the back of the solenoid. And some people will say, well, yeah, but I use a screwdriver. I'm like, all right, well, yeah, screwdriver's fine, but one of the things you can do is use your finger as a spacer, and then use another finger as a spacer. And since magnetism gets a lot weaker the further away you get, if you have a coil that's not pulling in all the way, then when you put your fingers in as a spacer, you end up with a compass needle that doesn't swing as hard as it may swing if the coil's working normally. Every one of you guys out there does things like this using your uh, intelligence and using your experience to make a decision. And every one of you can look at a compass and determine whether or not that compass is pulling in quickly or whether or not that compass is pulling in weakly. It's a very effective way to make a very quick decision and it's incredibly simple and it's not very expensive. Another rather interesting and very effective use of a compass is in diagnosing alternators. Without getting into too much detail, it's important for you to understand that an alternator is in parallel with the battery. When you crank the vehicle, energy from the battery goes into the starter, the starter turns as a load, the battery is the power supply. However, as soon as the alternator starts turning and charging, the battery becomes a load and the alternator becomes the power supply, which means the current flow in the battery cables reverses between starting and running. So if you put a compass on the battery cable, not the battery post, the battery cable. If you put a compass on the battery cable and crank the vehicle, what will happen is that the compass will spin one direction once the vehicle starts starting and then if the vehicle starts and the alternator is charging then the compass will change directions. The reason this does this is because the voltage or pressure inside the alternator becomes greater than the voltage or pressure inside the battery so the direction of the current flow, which is dependent upon pressure, changes. During crank, the battery is the power supply, and when the vehicle's running, the battery is in fact a load. The only way that the alternator can carry a load is if the voltage remains higher than the battery. So as long as the compass needle never swings back, the alternator is carrying a load. This cannot be argued, and it's an ex exceptionally simple and effective way to avoid changing an alternator that is not defective. I suggest you go out and buy a compass.